Okay, guys. Hey, I'm back. Here we go. I got you on the Ram B slider. This thing showed up around. Well, it started showing, exhibiting some light around 1340 UTC, which is uh, plus 11 hours for local time in Australia, Melbourne. <clears throat> I looked it up for uh, because Sally Ann Williams made a comment that she lives in Melbourne and she's going to. Take some pictures for us. So, right on, Sally. <clears throat> rock on. Rock on, girl. Rock on. <laughs> Let's hope. Let's hope we see those pictures. I mean, something's got to be showing up. And I looked, uh, there had clear skies in Melbourne last night, but she said something about her phone being dead or whatever. So, I don't know. But anyway. So here we got it here. These are the money shots on this Ram B thing. Look at all the more of the beams show up as opposed to that goes east, which I showed you this morning. And look at all the pixels. Oh, they got this whole thing pixelated out when it comes around here. Yonder way. See all the stair steps? No, that's not the stairway to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is the only way. Hallelujah. But I don't know. I'm in a weird mood today, guys. Sorry. And you can see there's the major pixel action. Got a little break there. And then we got the stairway here. So, I mean, obviously, this thing's pretty freaking huge got to be showing up way over here and way over here so I mean it should be lighting up the whole southern hemisphere uh, but so far I really haven't seen anybody post any pics on it um I could take it to the ghost east so how you work this thing you just see I checked all these bands this morning to try to see if I could catch it on a better band or better uh, satellite and I looked at most of them none of these these are all weather bands but uh, I couldn't find anything better than this natural color Umistat Umetsat and then you just go here that's the most images you can get on this Ram B slider click on the 15 minutes because the long they'll be zipping across the screen if you if you if you select a higher count so there's the uh and then you just go like this with this thing that'll start it rolling i pull it back all the way to the left so it goes slower now we probably aren't going to see it on here now i think i was at four utc i showed you that this morning yeah, that's not going to work. Okay. So we're back on the Himawari 8. And I'll put the link below in the description box. So at least I showed you how to do it. Go down here to the Umit Sat. Make sure you got the settings. Most number of images. Shortest number of minutes. And you're ready to rock and roll. You just got to move this speed uh, thing to start it going. So I'll let it run through one time, then I'm going to show you the space weather and the geospace and a couple other things. We'll just let that play. We'll 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 come back and look at it. There's the geospace. Last three hours, three and a half hours or so, still got the pressure equilibrium between. Solar wind coming from the sun and the solar wind coming from Nemesis. As you can see the numbers are pretty close to zero. So that's three full days now, which is unprecedented actually. I've seen it. Well, I haven't really been familiar with this site more than a month or two. So, but since I've been familiar with the site, I have only seen it go 
to uh, equilibrium pressure for maybe one run, three hour run, and not even the whole run. And then it went back to the normal full reds out here for the solar wind pressure and all the red around here, which indicates the uh, pressure from the backside on Nemesis. Speaking of which, here's the Iswa run. You can see the backside pressure building up around here. I checked these runs out. Uh, there's only a little bit of missing time, maybe a couple hours here and there. Solar wind speed. And this stuff's all being recorded by geosynchronous satellites, these GOES 13 and 14, at the 22,238 mile geosynchronous orbit where they have can park and go round and round the earth expending the least amount of fuel now this is all electron stuff trying to get into the planet planets having to develop a second bow shock behind the earth on the dark side which normally there's only one bow shock which is out here to ward off the solar wind pressure from the sun now you can see the magnetopause is getting all crimpled up and that's really should not be because look at the real time solar wind speed and solar density density it's below 10 and the solar wind speed I mean it's getting down around 300 and it's been that way all day 325 down as low as 306 there so between very little fluctuation so why is this thing being crumpled up and being bounced around like it's being hit with solar wind pressure something else is applying pressure to it or the magnetosphere is getting so weak that that's how it's reacting due to the constant drain of plasma and the constant drain to fight off what's coming from behind to keep all this solar wind pressure from getting into the planet. These are the uh, folk radiation belts. This is at the lowest energy electrons recorded at the lowest energy level and these are the highest energy electrons recorded at the highest energy level at least that's available for us to see I did see somewhere that they have one for 4500 KEV but it's not on ISWA so I mean the planet's being bathed in electrons and the reason being is the nemesis binary twin to our sun emits mostly electrons because our sun emits mostly protons and we got the equal opposites rule it's like Newtonian physics and you can see it man look at all the pressure and then these field lines the black ones normally just flow away from the planet like that that's why they're called polar cap field lines they come from the poles and then you get the auroras whenever there's more solar wind pressure and they have to close in order to fight off the extra pressure and then all that energy is directed back toward the earth and that's when you see the auroras and as you can see here the polar cap field lines are having to close all the time behind the planet to ward off this extra solar wind pressure and electrons from nemesis and you, you can see that from the arrows here too these arrows indicate solar wind sp speed here and then direction so they should always be coming from the right and going to the left on these simulations but as you can see the arrows get flipped around and they're coming this way back toward the earth which indicates solar wind pressure from behind I went over this a bunch of times, but for the people that are new to the channel, and check the description box out, open up the uh, 
solar ham tutorial open up the Lagrange point one you can open up links to the ACE and the discover they're both out at Lagrange point one which is 930,000 miles between the earth and the sun in front of the earth it's parked in that fixed position to uh, record all the stuff coming from our sun the phi angle that's explained in the solar ham tutorial if it's at 180 that means the interplanetary magnetic connection is coming from our sun to the earth if it's at zero it's coming from earth to the sun so there should be nothing above 180 so all this stuff above 180 you can see the numbers as I scroll along that all indicates an electromagnetic interplanetary magnetic field connection with nemesis behind the sun and these blue lines pretty well illustrated these are interplanetary magnetic field lines we have one sun most of the time and nine planets or so they say which um, I'm pretty sure that's true but anyway and you can see it on the Enlil uh, CME projection simulations the different field lines but as you can see there's plenty more than nine blue interplanetary magnetic field lines here and Nemesis is supposed to have seven planets so you get seven there plus R9 times two suns that equals 32 9 plus 7 16 times 2 and if you use your imagination or take the time I'm sure you can come up with close to 32 interplanetary magnetic field lines here so things are pretty crazy guys MLSO the uh, Mauna Loa Solar Observatory the reason I haven't posted anything is because they really haven't been giving us anything it's all pretty much X'd out each day so can't do anything with that so let's go back to this Ram B slider here we go yeah I, I don't recall seeing all this pixelation here yesterday so either it's something's changed and obviously it has a little bit so I think it's showing up a little earlier here it's getting more light reflected off of it still maintain it's a planet these white lights and I know I've been getting trolled on it about the sun simulator and not being real and so forth or questioning whether it's real it's real there's patents dating back to as early as the 70s on sun simulators and if you google a sun simulator you'll even come up with pictures of it or just go to Jeff P YouTube channel he pretty well documented all that stuff so there you have it guys we'll see how long they leave this thing up for us to look at and whatever changes might occur so I guess I'm gonna cut it short and uh, yeah that's about it for today there's the ace still got the big gap so <laughs> no gap showing on uh, discover which is odd so I don't know how to exactly explain that other than there's another large planet close to the a satellite and it's blocking the solar wind stream coming to that satellite which is causing it to be unable to record I covered that in this morning's video in detail so check that one out alright I'm gonna sign off uh, God bless you all peace and I'm out